So there's a person behind me who's flashing me to go faster. But I'm not gonna get intimidated by him. I'm gonna keep it at 20 miles per hour. Right now I'm outside Isleworth Test Center and I'm gonna show you how to drive on your test so you can pass first time. Let's go. So normally you'd start inside the test center, but the time that I arrived, I can't go in there right, right now. It's literally just on the left there. So you'd come out of there and then turn left, which is what we're gonna do now. So once the examiner tells you drive on and you're ready, you're gonna turn on the engine, clutch down, get into first, do your checks, because we're moving to the right hand side. I'm gonna check this mirror, that mirror, over right, my right shoulder. I'm gonna put a signal on because I've seen a few cars coming from that side. It could be quite busy. And check in as I come out, clutch up smoothly, adding some gas. I'm gonna keep it in second for now, or first, sorry, because I'm approaching the junction anyway. I'm gonna check my mirror, mirror, signal left here. So I'm gonna approach this junction, clutch down, and notice I'm aiming towards the left as well as I approach the junction. Making sure I don't go over the line, check in, double checking before I commit, and then making my turn. So onto a 20 mile an hour road, it's quite bumpy. So I'm not gonna be going too fast here. Uh, straight to a roundabout, checking the right hand side, but it looks good, so then I can carry on. I get asked as well, how do you go over speed bumps? You wanna go over them slowly, which is what they're designed to do, but you also want to avoid going on the wrong side of the road just to go on the smooth part. If you can, you can check your mirror and do it, but most of the time just stay in your lane properly so that you don't go over on the wrong side. Coming up to a situation where it could be a meeting situation here because the road is quite narrow, so I'm just gonna position myself a bit towards the left Get into first gear, I've already checked my mirrors, then now I'm going to check my mirror one more time on the right and then move out. I'm going to, I can see a car coming down the road, but I'm already here, so hopefully they're going to wait up there, which is what they're doing, so well done, and thank you. And then here we're going to turn left at this roundabout, so mirror, mirror, signal left. I'm keeping an eye on the cars coming from that side, so once the van has gone past, make sure that car is turning that way, then I can carry on. So. As I approached that roundabout, I couldn't see where the car behind the van was going straight away. So make sure you can see first before you commit into the roundabout. Still 20 miles per hour, so I'm just going to keep it around 20. It can be quite easy to go faster than this because cars are behind you and cars in front of you are going faster as well. I'm going to pull over on the left in a safe place. Let me find a safe place first before I do that. So what you don't want to do is stop suddenly or if you hear the instruction uh, pull over on the left in a safe place and if you can't find a place don't just stop in the middle of the road um, find a place first and then signal and then you can pull over so you've got the parking bays here once you've stopped handbrake on neutral and then you can rest your feet a lot of aeroplanes around here as well, so don't get distracted by don't get distracted by them. Focus on your drive. The examiner is going to tell you to drive on again. At which point you're going to get into first gear. I'm going to do my checks. I can already see a car in my rear view mirror, but I think they're going the other way. Check over to the right. Signal. As I'm coming out, I'm checking this side as well and over my shoulder because I don't want to miss anything coming down the road as I come out of that parking spot. So lots of reminders on the floor that the speed is still 20 miles per hour. And at the moment my speed is around 20. Feels very slow but this is what you have to do guys, okay? Get used to driving 20 miles per hour. It takes a bit of practice. If you're not used to driving 20 miles per hour, uh, go to roads like this where you have to do it and practice quite a lot of times because it's really easy to forget that it's a 20 mile an hour road and then put too much gas on and then before you know it you're doing 25, 26 and you're going to fail the test. And especially if someone's behind you, it can be really uncomfortable going slowly but 
You didn't set the rules, you didn't set the speed limit, so you, you just have to follow them. That's how you gotta think of it. Okay, coming up to a meeting situation potentially, so I'm checking my mirror first. I can see a bunch of traffic behind me. Check my right mirror. I'm checking if there's any space or if there's enough space here for both cars coming this way and us, and there is, so I'm just gonna go slowly as I do that. Then in this roundabout, I'm gonna turn right, so mirror, mirror, signal right. So I'm remembering that the right has priority, so that's where my main attention is. I can see it's nice and clear. Then I'll have a little glance to the left, but I'm not focusing too much on the left, which is what a lot of learners do, and then they end up making mistakes. Here we're gonna go left, so mirror, mirror, signal left. And I can see that a car is very far away, so I don't need to worry about them. I'm still in second gear, don't need to worry about the clutch too much because I didn't, I didn't need to change gears or stop there. Keep going round and then I can see at the end here, I'm going to be turning left. So I'm gonna check my center, check my left, signal left. So what you wanna do is well, look early into the junction if you can, like here I can see from far away that it's kind of clear so I can keep moving. Yeah, don't leave it until you get to the junction to then start checking, check early so that if it's clear, you can keep moving. Yeah, still 20s. So a lot of areas now are 20 miles per hour. Here we're gonna turn right at the end, so mirror, mirror, signal right. Position myself towards the right of this junction as I get here. Yep. This one's kind of a closed junction, so I can make sure I can check both sides and see where this car's going first. He's turning, it looks like, so let him start slowing down and then, then I can move out. Then here we're gonna go left. And then cancel my signal. So some roundabouts and junctions are really close together. So you're gonna make sure you signal the correct way so people around you know which way you're going. So very residential around here in Isleworth especially on this route. And we're gonna turn right to the end. So center mirror, right mirror, signal right. Making sure I go past that road first before signaling so I don't confuse anybody. Getting into first, check both sides properly. It's looking good, carry on. And then if I'm not sure about the speed limit, have a look at the floor, a little reminder. Another sign there telling us it's still 20, then carry on. The car's slowing down at the front there. You notice I'm not rushing to get there and then, start, and then slamming my brake. I'm slowing down nice and early, keeping a nice distance. This way you can keep the, the traffic flowing. You can keep the car moving smoothly as well. Less stops this way. We're gonna go left at the roundabout. So mirror, mirror, signal left. And then I wanna make sure I keep the zebra crossing clear as well. This is why you wanna keep a nice distance because you can do stuff like this. If you're driving too close, you won't see uh, that zebra crossing until it's too late and then before you know it, you're gonna be blocking it. Checking the right from early, it's nice and clear. No one's coming from there. And then we've got another zebra crossing and I can see somebody walking behind this so I can put my clutch down and brake. Checking both sides here before I move. Once this person's gone to the middle, I can carry on now because you treat this as two separate crossings. So in there in the middle, you can carry on moving. So a busy high street situation here, we've got somebody coming out of their car. These kind of roads here, a lot of things can happen here. People are crossing the road, cars parking, cars coming out of parking spaces. So this is not a place to be rushing. Keeping an eye on the lights. We've got a car sticking out from the side on the left there. They might be trying to come out of the spot and we've got a bus coming towards us as well. So I'm just gonna reduce my speed here. Cause you see, it's a hazard. So don't ignore those kind of situations where something is sticking out a little bit more than normal. Start reacting to it by slowing down and then thinking that they might just come out, which they did there. Especially if there's another vehicle coming towards you as well. I'm just gonna leave it in first while I wait for this light to change. So now it's changing, check both sides, check my mirrors as well. And then a bit of gas, clutch up. And then into second.
So this person just stopped in the middle of the road. That's why you've got to be ready for these kind of people. So be ready to stop, be ready to slow down at any given moment. We're going to be taking the next right, so mirror, mirror. So I can see here there's a no entry here. Some people have turned into or tried to turn into no entry roads on their tests. But you have to, that car's quite far away so I can make my turn. You have to look at the signs. Also, if it's got uh, the giveaway lines, you're not going to turn into a road that's got giveaway lines. You turn into one that's got the single line. If it's got two lines all the way across, you can't enter that side. Even if you haven't seen the no entry sign. So we've got a cyclist coming down the road here. People make this mistake of just ignoring them and thinking, oh, it's only a cyclist, I'm going to go through because they don't take up much space. To so take your time, let them come through. So he's gone around me now, and now I can carry on. Yeah, and I think he appreciated that as well. So don't be ignoring them, thinking that they're not going to take much space. Give them room. So this is a two-way road, but right now I'm right in the middle because it's too narrow to be on the left side, but now it's a bit wider now. I can check my left mirror and go towards my side of the road. Checking that side as well, checking the mirror. I can see somebody coming down the road. We've got a meeting situation coming up here and I'm assessing their side. I'm, I'm assessing spaces on my side, but they've got plenty of spaces on their side if they needed to go to that side. So like now, they should wait for me. Yeah, so they're gonna wait. And then I'm gonna check my mirror and go towards the left. You don't have to thank them, by the way, guys. If you if you rather just concentrate on the steering and on the driving, do that. Don't bother thanking anybody. If you're on your test, just focus on the drive instead. And then at the end, I'm going to turn left. I'm going to check my center, left mirror, signal left, and then I'm going to approach it in first, so that if this guy moves, I can then move on. I've got a pedestrian so even if this car wasn't there I'll let the pedestrian cross properly and I can see we're on a slight slope here and I can tell that because if I come off the brake you see the car starts rolling back so if you're not comfortable doing the hill start without using the handbrake put it on get the biting point a little bit of gas and then hold the clutch still at the bite come to the giveaway line stop again so I can check for myself that it's clear and just in case we're, on, we're still on the slope, handbrake on. This car's turning, but there's a motorbike behind him. So I don't want to risk it. If you're not sure, just wait. So like now that car's gone, check again, check my left mirror in case there's a cyclist or a motorcyclist trying to creep past, but there's no one there. Then I can carry on now. Yeah, so at junctions, it's really simple to do. People fail there too many times because they are, they are unsure about whether to go or not. It's simple. If you're unsure, don't go. Only go if you're really sure. That way you're never gonna fail. So just like here, if you, we can't turn in here because it's got a double line there. Yeah. But the next one we can turn because it's got one single line on the left side. So mirror, mirror, signal left. It's very, very sharp here. So I'm gonna go into first gear and then do a sharp turn. Notice I crossed my arms there as well. It's okay, and then we're doing a right turn straight away. Yeah, don't be afraid to cross your arms. You're allowed to do that as long as the car's controlled properly. If you feel more comfortable doing it that way, then go ahead, do it that way. Again, in the middle of the road, I'm still thinking about any cars that might come through because this is a two-way road here and there's not enough space for two cars. So I'm preparing myself if anybody comes, uh, even around this bend actually, I'm gonna have my foot near the clutch in case I need to stop suddenly. I'm gonna brake gently, checking over the corner there before I go around the bend. So I'm checking around the cars just in case somebody came and I could, I will see them before. So here I'm gonna go into first because it's kind of tight here. I need to, I need to cut the corner a bit here because there's vans in the way. So sometimes you might need to cut the corner and it's okay. Don't cut the corner unnecessarily when there's, when there's no reason to do it, but if there's a reason to do it, there's not enough space, then you can cut the corner. Here, I'm gonna turn right at the end. 
check both sides, creep out slowly, yeah, and then carry on. I'm gonna pull over on the left in a safe place, so mirror, mirror, signal left. So sometimes the examiner might tell you, just pull up on the left, but then you see other cars half on the pavement, half on the road. You don't need to go on the pavement as well, just keep your car fully on the road and you should be okay that way. And then the examiner will tell you, drive on again when you're ready. So I'm gonna check my surroundings. or oh, get into first gear first of all. By the way, the order is not too important. It's, it's, it's useful to know it so that you don't get confused. But let's say for instance, I forgot to go into gear one and I start looking around and then I'm going to gear one and then move off. That's also okay. The main thing is that you do it safely. They're not gonna get judged and oh, he didn't do it. He didn't do the, the gear first or he didn't do the mirror first. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is that you look over your shoulder and, and through your mirrors before you move off. Yeah, so let me just show you in case um, like a different way. So let's say now I start looking around, getting into first, I'll signal, look around again with my shoulder and then move off. That's, all, that's gonna be okay, yeah, because I've done it safely. Well, people are taught to do it in, in a certain order just because it's easier to remember, but you don't have to do it in that order as long as it's done safely. Still 20, still driving in the middle because it's very narrow. back to my side because it's wider. So I'm gonna turn right at the end here, but you can see here, we can't go to the right over there. We've got the bollard here telling us we need to keep to the left as we approach this junction. So keep to this side, signal right, and then on this part, I can go to the right hand side. Get into first because I can't really see properly. Looks really busy here to turn right. So this is gonna be fun. So I've got my clutch in, got clutch down in gear one, ready to go, waiting for a nice big gap. So I've got to check both sides. I can see a nice gap. Yep. That was a big enough gap. Because there I was checking both sides and I could see there was a gap from this side, a long, a big gap. That's what you want to do. You check both sides all the time because if you're only focusing on one side, you're gonna you're gonna see a gap on this side, but then you, you have to get a fresh look on the other side. So instead of doing it that way, keep looking both sides so that you have a picture of what's going on on both sides so that when you see a gap, you already kind of know that on the other side is clear, then you can make your move. I'm gonna keep left here because it's telling us that we're turning left at these lights here. We've got a filter arrow for the left, so I'm gonna signal anyway so people know that I'm going to the left, pedestrians especially. Let's have a quick check on that side. There should be no one coming from there, but you never know. Somebody might have missed the light. And then this roundabout, we're gonna go left first exit. Somebody asked the other day, why do you have to check a mirror when you're braking or before you brake? It's because sometimes people are really close behind you. So if you brake too hard, they can end up crashing into you. So you, when you check, you can See how close they are, then you can brake gently. Here we're gonna go left first exit, so I'm already signaled. Oh, it's going to red, so I can have enough time to react. And because I was checking my mirror from before, I knew how far the person was behind me. That way I knew how much to brake without it being dangerous. So if you're the first person at the lights, especially if you don't know how long the lights are gonna be, just stay in gear one and be ready. It's easier that way. Or if you're really comfortable with going into neutral and then getting your car ready again, then you can do it that way. But in the first place, if you're not that comfortable, stay in gear, so it's gonna be okay. You get a lot of people saying, oh, don't stay in gear, it's gonna damage the car. I've had this car for years now and I do this all the time. My learners do this all the time and it's been fine. Like now it's green. 
go straight to the left lane. I can see I'm 40 mile an hour sign there, so I'm just gonna start picking up my speed into third. So some people would have turned into the right and then stick to the right, and that's how you're gonna get a serious fault. If you're not overtaking or if you're not gonna turn right soon, stick to the left lane. Just like I'm doing now, there's no need for me to be on the right at the moment. But if you hear the examiner say at the next traffic lights we're going to turn right or if you hear the sat nav say at the next traffic lights we're going to turn right make sure you start doing that as soon as it's safe to do so start moving over to the right don't leave it until you get to the lights to, to try to uh, change lanes because it's going to be difficult by then keeping an eye on the speed the whole time so it's still 40 miles per hour Every now and again, checking behind me as well to see what's going on around me, who's behind me, how close are they, what are they doing, is anybody driving crazy? So just be nosy, you've got to be nosy. So in the distance, there's a bit of traffic up there. So I'm just gonna start easing off the gas Right now I've got no gas on and then as I get closer I'm going to start braking gently. Yeah, you see a lot of learners kind of almost like they ignore these, this traffic jam. They'll keep the gas on the whole time and then start braking when they get really close. That's not a good way to drive. Yeah, start slowing down much, much earlier. And that way it's smoother, safer and you have more time to uh, react to things and be safer as well. So you see, the car wasn't jerky. I didn't feel like I was gonna crash into this car. It was nice and smooth. And then now because everyone's going slowly, I'm gonna go back into first. Keeping a nice distance between me and this car. There's no need for me to be really uh, close behind this guy. Because a lot of learners, they'll, they feel like they have to keep up with everybody and be right on their bumper. You don't have to do that. Especially when you can see lots of traffic up ahead as well. You're not going anywhere fast, so it doesn't make sense tailgating these people. If there's a little bit of a gap, that's fine. And this way it makes it easier to drive as well, because I see learners struggling to keep up with the car in front of them, and then they end up having to brake really hard, accelerate really hard, brake really hard. It's too much work. If you keep your distance, when this person does whatever they do, I've got lots of time to think about what I need to do and then carry it out. But if I'm really close to them, everything that they do, I've got to respond straight away and that's really difficult and unsafe as well. Yeah, so I'm not just looking at the car in front, I'm looking at the ones in, ahead of them and the way in front of them as well. What are they doing? That's gonna affect me shortly. Yeah, just like this car's not moving because the other cars are moving, then I can just slow down as well. Sometimes people don't move when you think they're going to move or when you expect them to move. Be ready for them to just stay there. Sometimes people are on their phones or they might not have seen that the traffic is moving for whatever reason. If they're not moving, they'll keep driving thinking they're going to get out of your way. Start slowing down so that you can actually wait for them to move first and then carry on behind them. So these kind of situations, not much is going on here, but this is where you can actually fail if you're not careful. We've got a pedestrian crossing in front of us here and it's been green for a very long time. Lots of stop start traffic. And if I'm not careful, I could end up blocking the crossing and then it's gonna change to red and somebody's gonna to try to cross and I'm gonna be in the way, that's a serious fault. So to make sure that doesn't happen, I always make sure, first of all, I check that it's still green and then make sure I've got space beyond the crossing before I go past the white line. That way I'm not gonna get stuck in this section for pedestrians. This roundabout, I'm gonna go left first exit.
gonna get a little bit closer before I signal. Or at least wait for the lights to change. If your foot's getting tired because you've done lots of clutch control, especially if you're a few cars back from the lights, you can go into neutral, handbrake on, and then relax your foot, shake it about a little bit so that it's not so tired. Because if you keep it down the whole time, especially in traffic, you can get really tiring. But if you're a few lights ahead, uh, behind, you see, like, or if you're a few cars behind from the lights, you see, once they go green, you have lots of time before these cars move until you have to move, so you have time to get the car into gear and move off. So now I can signal left, keep an eye on this light, and you can see the traffic is going slow here. I think there's a red light for us. So I can brake gently, cancel my signal. Check this mirror because there's a big space here. Cars might have tried to squeeze past there or even motorbikes will try to squeeze past. So anywhere there's a big space, going into a smaller space, check that mirror. So we're near Twickenham Stadium. Again, if you're, if you're a rugby fan, don't get distracted. Don't get too excited. Remember what you're, what you're here for to do your driving test, so focus on that. We're going towards the left here. So I'm gonna aim for the left lane. I'm gonna signal as well, just so people know what I'm doing. Light was changing, but it was uh, changing quite late, so I can still go through. If you have to slam your brakes to stop for the amber light, then you shouldn't do it. So back to the 20 zones again. So we had a little bit of speed, and then now back to the slow speeds. This is really challenging, because if you've gone fast for a while, we were lucky there because we had a bit of traffic before we actually turned off, but if you're kept coming off a 40 mile an hour road straight into a 20 road, it's really difficult because you won't notice how, how fast you're actually going. It's going to feel like you're going slowly, but really you might be going too fast. We're going to pull over on the left. And mirror, mirror, signal left. I can drive over this bus stop. I'm not stopping in the bus stop. I can drive over it just so I can have space to line my car up. And then now that it's... Uh, position nicely I can stop in the parking bay because I've, what I've seen I've seen people avoid the bus stop and then try to make this into a tight space like this that's going to be really difficult instead go over the bus stop that way you have more time to actually line your car up properly and then stop be careful though make sure you're not going over a bus lane when it's active so bus lane and bus stops are different yeah? I'm going to move on again over my shoulder the car's quite far away so I can Carry on into second, remembering that it's still 20 miles per hour. So this is the pedestrian crossing. They don't stay red for ages, most of them. So if I slow down enough, I might be able to carry on before stopping. But yeah, see, there you go. So it's going to flashing amber, which means is what kind of crossing is it, guys? You tell me in the comments. I can keep moving because it was flashing amber. So instead of rushing to get to the lights and then slamming my brake and stopping, I went there slowly and then kept moving once it started flashing amber. So there's a person behind me who's flashing me to go faster. But I'm not gonna get intimidated by him. I'm gonna keep it at 20 miles per hour. So he's probably doing about 30 now. Don't let people intimidate you into going faster than you have to. It takes time to kind of like, well, it takes experience to ignore that kind of thing. But don't let it phase you. If he wants to overtake me, he can do it when it's safe. I'm not going to break the speed limit just because he wants to go fast. Uh, we're going to take the next right, so mirror, mirror, signal right. There's no lines here, but I'm going to guess where the middle is by using this crack in the middle of the road here. And I don't want to go over it and get in the way of these cars here. So this person has flashed me, check my mirror, and then go. I don't have to go there just because they flashed me, they had priority. But if I feel comfortable going and I can see that it's safe, I can go. Yep. 
braking a lot here because it's a bit tight through here getting into first and then carry on so when it's really tight like that don't rush through there if you have to gear down gear down we're gonna turn right here mirror mirror signal right I think we came over there earlier. We came from down there, but now we're going this way. Bit of a bumpy road. So here, I was gonna say, this is a, a tricky situation here because we've got a meeting situation where we need to go on the wrong side of the road and on a bend as well. So check this side first before going round that way if anybody's coming through like that van was you're already aware that they're coming through so you can stop before going around on the wrong side and then here we're already on the on the road if anybody came now if there was not enough space hopefully they'll wait up there because there's not space for us to go on this side we're already here now so they would have to be the ones to stop if there wasn't if there wasn't enough space mirror mirror turning right here Check both sides and then come out. So it's just taking us in a loop. Still 20. Back to that same right turn again, so mirror, mirror, signal. We've got a car coming down. They're turning as well, so I'm just gonna go into first because they have priority. Check my right mirror. Then once they've gone, I can follow them, making sure I stick to my side without cutting the corner because I don't need to cut the corner there. Plenty of room on my side to be there properly. slowly again because we've got a meeting situation so they're breaking if people are breaking in front of you that's usually an indicator for you that you might have to slow down there as well just like here I'm gonna slow down a bit more check the right so here we're gonna go right and then left mirror mirror signal right we've got a person crossing the road with their kid on their bike so I'm just gonna approach it slowly and then signal left. We've got a bus coming through. So because there's lots of parked cars on this side and this lane is not that wide, I need to go a bit over this side to go uh, past these cars without getting too close. So I need to be really careful, especially if a large vehicle is coming down the road, I can't go too far to the right. So I was supposed to be turning right there. I missed it, but you see what I did? Instead of doing a last minute turn, I just carried on. That's what you want to do. Don't do any last minute turns. Just carry on and then you're going to get redirected. It's much safer that way. The number one thing you need to think about on your driving test is safety. So if you get lost, or if you go down the wrong road, it's not a big problem. As long as it's not a no entry, obviously, but it's not a big problem. What is a problem is if you try to do a last minute turn and it's not safe, that's when you're gonna get in trouble. Here we're gonna, it says straight here, but I'm gonna signal anyway, because just to give people around here an idea of where I'm going, because it's a bit left. You see, I've got to turn my steering wheel left to get here. Another zebra, another roundabout. Got this car. Let them go past. And then 
Here you go. Meeting situation. Go slowly. Bumpy. Yeah, you notice I'm taking my time here. I'm not rushing anything. Taking the next left. So I'm gonna check my center, left mirror, signal left. Brake. Have my clutch ready in case I need to use gear one or if I need to stop. Uh, it's rumbling a bit, so I might go into one here because I can't really see anything coming through here. It's gonna go slowly. Check my mirror. I'm gonna pull up on the left so I can do a parallel park over there. So mirror, mirror, signal left. And then stop here. Handbrake on, neutral. The examiner here will explain. So I've heard some people in the comments get really angry because I blocked a driveway when I was doing a parallel park. On your driving test, you are allowed to do that. The examiner will explain to you as well that you can block the driveway. It's okay on this occasion. You can block the driveway. So right now, this car might be the only car that they've seen that's suitable for this maneuver. Um, and the space behind or in front of it is, dri is a driveway. So we're not gonna be there for that long. So you are permitted to do that, which is what we're gonna do. The wording that they might use is, I'd like you to do a, a parallel park using the car in front. I'd like you to reverse um, and finish anywhere within two car lengths. On this occasion, you can draw, you can ignore the driveway and you can finish blocking the driveway. Just don't drive over it. Which means basically don't go onto the pavement because it's really easy to do it when, it's really easy to go over the pavement when it's flat, when it's a driveway like this, because you won't feel it. So let's do this one. I'm gonna do my checks. I'm not gonna signal because no one is really around. Make sure there's no one coming from behind me. And then pull up next to the car. Get into reverse, do my checks, and then turn gradually to the left. I see a lot of people do a big turn to the left. You can do it that way if you find it easy, but this way for me is much easier. Just a small turn to the left, and then the car is gradually going towards the curb. Then as I get a bit closer, I can start turning gradually away. Yeah, this makes it much simpler to do, and then I can make any adjustments I need to. The whole time checking, all around me yeah and then once i'm here i can handbrake on neutral or if i feel like it's not quite straight i can check my mirrors it's right now it's straight but I just show you what to do i can go forward a little bit and then straighten up remember you're allowed to block the driveway because it's fine i'm not trying to aim to be really far away from the driveway because you're allowed to be here once you've done that, the examiner then will say, drive on please when it's safe. Then I'm gonna yeah, get in my car into gear, do my checks. I'm so used to checking over my left shoulder first because I've been doing this for years, but you don't have to do it that way. You can check this mirror, that mirror, then that mirror, and then drive on if it's safe. Yeah, and you can put a signal on. It's not gonna affect your marking on it. I'm gonna slow down here because I can't see anybody coming through. It's nice and safe. Make sure you use a sun visor. If you can't see properly, the sun is beaming in your eyes. Put a sun visor down, that's what it's there for. Or have your sunglasses ready if it's a really sunny day. The road bends to the left here. You don't need to signal here because the road only goes towards the left. It doesn't go anywhere else. So I'm preparing by having my clutch ready, but there's no one coming down. And then at the end here, we're gonna turn right. So mirror, mirror, signal right. Let me move this out of the way a bit so I can see. Making sure I go back to my side because you see I was forced to drive on the wrong side a bit on the approach here. But once I get closer and the, the space opens up, I make sure I go back to my side properly. 
these vans, there's, some, there's a few vans here blocking my view, so I can't really see properly. So what I'll do, I'm going to creep forward because on the right here is nice and clear. Then check, and then it's looking good. And then now I can carry on. If you can't see properly, sometimes you have to creep out a little bit, just so you can see. So here I'm going to turn right. heading back. Well, I'm going to do a quick show me question. Something that the examiner might ask you. They might say something like, when it's safe, show me how you put on your dipped headlights. So I'm not going to do it right now because I've got a car coming towards me and I've got to do a bit of steering here. So I'm going to do it when it's nice and easy, when there's not too much going on. So you can do it whenever you're ready, don't rush to do this. So like now, for instance, I've got lots of space. I'm going to do my question, put the lights back off. Slowing down a bit, let this car move. Constantly reminding myself what the speed limit is. Okay, we've got a bus coming through. So buses and other large vehicles take up a lot of space, so like there. Don't ignore them. Slow down more so that they can come through and then carry on. Smaller vehicles like this one, you're looking at their wheels. If they're going on their if they're on their side still, and it's not gonna be too much trouble. But if they are coming to your side, you need to be really careful. Share the road a bit with this car, so move a bit left. So they had a vehicle parked on their side. I've got lots of room on my side, so I can move a bit left so that we can share. Just like here, I'm going to move a little bit left so that they can go a bit around. See, they're a bit over the line. I don't need to be sticking to this side too much because they don't have much space. Here, I'm going to signal right here because we're turning right. Give this bus plenty of room. So on the roundabout, I'm focusing on the right. Keep my signal on, there's a motorbike coming from there. So I'm just gonna see what he does. Once he's gone, I can start moving. This person on the left has to wait for me. But I had my eye on him anyway. But you need to be confident. Practice focusing on the right side and then going when, it's, when the right side is clear. Don't be too chicken with it. Nice and slowly here, more meeting situations. So on the home stretch now, going back to the test center. Don't get too comfortable though. Stay focused. Still do your mirror checks. Still keep an eye on your speed. We're going straight at this roundabout. Keeping an eye on that car coming down, but they're not reaching the roundabout before we do. This car on the left has to wait for us. So that can be quite scary there, a car coming through that fast from the left. But be confident that they're going to stop. Here okay, we're going to turn right, mirror, mirror, signal, position myself towards the right of the road. And then once I get to my position to turn, check my mirror and then make my turn. So by now, normally you'd turn into the test center, but we're going to pull up on the 
right hand side over there so we can have a debrief and this is where the examiner will tell you to switch off your engine so they can count how many bolts you have you're probably going to have not too many then they're going to tell you well done you've passed then you can have your license so just to recap if you're in this test center especially the one we just done now this route you need to be really good at meeting situations practice your meeting situations uh practice driving slowly in 20 at 20 miles per hour everywhere because there's a lot of 20 mile an hour roads even if people are pressuring you to go fast which you've got on halfway through the test today people are pressuring me to go but i didn't fall to that pressure and that way if you drive like that and you drive safely and you drive according to the rules you can pass okay so hopefully you found that useful make sure you subscribe for more like this thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye